Greetings and welcome to From the Basement. In this episode, I'm going to take a look at getting the flight deck set up in Unity for editing and creating content. If you don't know what the flight deck is, it is a new tablet that's coming out that has stereoscopic 3D built into it. Meaning it's basically like the Nintendo 3DS. You don't need 3D glasses to be able to see 3D on it. Now, the instructions that come with the flight deck at the moment are okay, but they leave out a couple of details and gotchas, and so hence the point of this video. The first thing you want to do is you do want to make sure that you have your layers set up correctly. You're going to want to edit your layers, and you want to make sure somewhere in here you have a no draw layer created. It is not the end of the world if you import the package first, then go back and do this, but you are going to have to go back through and uh, make a couple of changes. You still have to make a couple of changes anyways. But make sure you got that no draw layer. That is very important. It will not work without this no draw layer. Next, we do our usual import of a package. So I'm going to import a custom package, navigate to where that happens to be on my machine. Twiddle our thumbs while we wait for this to compile, which it goes pretty quick. There's not too much in here. And then dig down into the resources where I will have a screen 3D folder. There's a couple of things here that I need to check to make sure everything is set up okay. First, I need to check the eyes on my camera. So I'm going to take these, this main camera's prefab, expand it, and I have a left eye and a right eye. The key thing on these guys is I need to make sure that the culling mask does not have the no draw layer. So usually what I do is I tell it everything and then uncheck no draw. And then everything and then uncheck no draw. And we should be good on that. Now the next thing we gotta do is we have to expand out uh, stereo. First we gotta look at stereo and make sure it has the layer. Sometimes the layer comes in, sometimes the layer does not come in. Uh, I've never really quite figured out 100% the pattern on this, but you always got to check this. And if the no draw layer is not there, well, change the layer and tell it to yes, change children. We don't, we want these guys on the no draw layer. Then we're going to come down here uh, at this camera and we want to make sure that the only thing it has selected is no draw. And then for the um, depth, have it set to one. And I believe that is it. Oh, clear flags, almost forgot that one. Depth only on the clear flags for the camera. And then we need to make sure on this plane here, double check to make sure that it has the no draw layer. Everything else is fine. Once we have those things set up, we can look at getting our camera set up in scene. Now, ignore the instructions where it says to drag the screen 3D script onto the main camera. Don't do that. That will mess up the project, or at least it won't work properly. Instead, what you want to do is you want to drag over this main camera's prefab that has our eyes. Now, I'm going to make sure these are, this is centered at 000. zero, zero. And I'm going to then, the next thing we have to set up is a look at point, a look point. Where are the eyes focused in this scene? Now, this could really vary depending on your project. If you're like having a third person perspective, you would probably want to set the look point, like this documentation suggests, to a player object. So like if you were going to try to recreate their uh, Angry Bots demo that they have, you would want to then take the player character and set that at the look at point. Uh, first person camera type game, you'd probably need to experiment around a little bit with uh, setting a point straight out from the camera that would work well. For this, I am going to add on a uh, empty game object and I am going to move it forward in the Z uh, three meters, and then I'm going to set that as my look at point. 
label it appropriately, and drag it in here. I am not going to set up a GUI camera for this example. Follow the documentation as far as camera depths go and enabling and disabling certain items, and setting up the GUI camera is pretty simple. All right, so with the main cameras set up, now let's actually get something in here to look at. I am going to create two cubes. I'm going to uh, move this one forward. And let's see here. I'll move it back and move this one up and to the right. And also drop in a light while I'm thinking about it. And then I'm going to create another cube. Move it forward, down a little bit, and to the left. Mainly so that we've got some depth. Now, if you actually have a flight deck, setting the depth is important, so that way you can actually see the fact that the cubes are at different depths. Since I'm doing this over YouTube, obviously the stereoscopics part isn't going to work out so hot. Uh, but we can still test to make sure this has been set up correctly. When we hit play, if everything has been set up correctly, it's going to default to this really weird looking mode. And if we click on these three cubes here, it's going to give us our controls. And we have the option, currently it's defaulting to the side by side. We can disable the, uh, the 3D stereoscopic, which gives us just our regular old view. Or we can activate interlaced, which on a regular monitor like this is going to look really strange. However, if you are on a flight deck or something else that is capable of stereoscopic 3D, then it's going to look correct. It's going to actually look like there is depth here. And that's how you can check on the desktop to see whether or not the camera is working correctly. If the camera is not working correctly, you will not be able to switch between these three modes. One final thing, if you want to always start in interlaced mode, go back up to the main cameras and interlaced. And now it automatically starts in interlaced mode. Also, if you don't want that little GUI symbol right there, there is a no GUI option right there. So I had it checked at runtime before it ran. I had that checked, and that disabled that little uh, icon there. If that is unchecked, then we get our little control. So. That's the bare bone basics on getting a flight deck set up for uh, development. Of course, you also need to make sure you have the drivers installed, you know, the usual Android setup for uh, Unity development. Uh, remember, the drivers are unsigned, which means if you have the privilege, yay, of being on Windows 8.1, that means you have to jump through flaming hoops in order to be able to install the drivers. Uh, so make sure you check the internet on that. That's way beyond the scope of this tutorial going through that particular mess. Just be aware that if you're on a Windows 8 or 8.1 machine, the drivers for the flight deck at this moment are unsigned, and so you've got to go through the unsigned driver install process. And it is a process. So with that, signing off. Until the next video.